Welcome to Week in Geek, your new comics preview for December 21st. I'm Mike Ortiz. And I'm the Chris Brown. So what do you got? All right, I got uh, Tiny Titans number 47 here. Um, love this book. Yeah. This is, you know, we're in the middle of Christmas week here. This is a, a perfect stocking stuffer mm. uh, for the little ones, for the big ones. Uh, we got Baby tit Titans Lost in Metropolis. So it's like like a Baby Titans Day Out kind of thing. Yeah. Um, this, this book is fun. It's always fun. Uh, a series of short stories, like you were saying, yeah. you don't have to you don't have to read all of them. You can just pick an issue issue up at random, and you're good to go. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason this won uh, won an Eisner. This is uh, good stuff. Yes. Uh, next up, I got the Avengers. Looks like uh, hulked out Hydra heroes here, or, or not heroes, but bad guys. And um, you know, they're they're in the middle of this whole Norman Osborn's back and Norman's causing some trouble story. Um, we just got that in New Avengers. It looks like it's going across to everything. You know, Bendis is writing it all anyway. Right. Um, I like the Avengers. It's a fun book. We were talking last week about how Bendis is leaving, which mm -hmm. is, you know, unfortunate. It is what it is. Hopefully, someone else will, yeah. you know, step up and, and do a good job on it. My money's on Remender. Oh, he's stuff. He's doing Secret Avengers. So oh, then that'll I be. I can fun. see him move up to the uh, to the big leagues after that. Uh, next up, we got uh, Daredevil number seven. Daredevil's doing some snow angels here on the rooftops of Hell's Kitchen. Dare Angel. Yeah, <laughs> I love this book. Daredevil is good again. Really, really good. Now, and that's not fair to say because he was only, in my opinion, bad for a short period of time. Yeah. I don't want to complain too much now that the uh, I fanboys be nice, damn it. I'm trying, but it ain't always easy. I don't want to, you know, pee in somebody's cornflakes, but although I, I dare say if, I, if, if no one was in the room and Andy Diggle had his cornflakes, I might. Yeah. I might. I'm trying to be nice. You'd be lucky it. if you only pee in it. <laughs> Uh, then we got Fantastic Four 601, you know. Hickman. Hickman. Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of, he's, he's you know, reestablishing the team back. And, yeah. you know, we got Johnny back. And, and let's see, let's see where it goes. You know, I'm, I'm curious for his next, uh, his next loop here and how he's going to do this. All right, next up, we got uh, Fear Itself, The Fearless, number five. I actually like this book. No one's reading it but me and, like, four other guys. Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone just got tired of the Fear Itself, yeah. you know, stuff. Everyone's just done. They're tired. They don't want to deal with it anymore. Um, I like it. I, I think this, it, it's basically the, the story itself. I really wish they had done Fear Itself in, like, four issues. Just got it done. And then the aftermath, everything else that they want to do with this idea is cool. It's strong. Yeah. It just took so damn long to get to it. And now people are tired and they're frustrated, but this book is fun. I, I like it. You know, uh, Valkyrie's trying to get, you know, all the hammers. There's something going on that they're trying to accomplish, and other people are trying to get the hammers, and kind of kind of cool. Kind of cool. Uh, then Incredible Hulk number three. I also like this book. Mm -hmm. I, I'm There's a lot of books here that I'm uh, I'm getting into again that I liked and then didn't like for, for a while. Like, that, that took their dip that, that got me off the book, but now I'm swinging back into it. Um, this is written by Jason Aaron, who I have not read a lot of his stuff. Yeah. I don't hear things about him that go across the board where everyone's like, oh my god, he's great. People like the things they like, and then there have been a few things that have been shaky, but they really like the things they like. And this book's good. Uh, Mark Silvestri doing Hulk is fantastic. Uh, really, really cool. St oh, man. Big green monkey. Big green hulked out gorilla. All right. That's, yeah. It's, it's going to be awesome. Then uh, switching over a little little image, we always uh, you know do our image create our yeah. own books. And uh, Xena Holix has been a really really cool book. It is uh, you know it's written by Joshua Williamson and drawn by Seth the Moose. Um, it, it's it's weird, you know. It's kind of these people who are addicted to being abducted by aliens, and then there was some kind of an alien invasion, and and just kind of strange, okay. but but fun. Um, this is I, I like this book, and again it's you know book that me and like. Two other people are reading. Yeah. Then we got Batman number four. That's an awesome cover. I'm really liking Capullo's artwork yeah. on Batman. It's different. Mm -hmm. It's very, very different, and and I like it. Um, the writing's been solid. Obviously, Scott Snyder. You can't go wrong with him. Then we've got uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number five. This book, uh, also a book I'm having fun with. I like the Turtles again. You know, man, I'm wrapped up in all this fun stuff. Again. I really, you know, in a lot of ways, I'm feeling like I'm a 15-year-old kid again. Because yeah, okay. all that stuff is coming up and just is fun. And I'm having a good time with it. The retailer and Cine variant for this is awesome, too. It's like a, a snowman uh, with a bandana on, and the Turtles are looking in the back like they made a, a snow turtle. Oh, nice. <laughs> kind of awesome. 
Uh, then we got Sergio Aragoni's Funnies, number six, which is another book that I talk about every yeah. every month. Uh, we got Santa on the cover, so we're probably going to get a little holiday issue here. Well, what, what I like about this, aside from the fact that Sergio Aragoni's can do no wrong, is that there are funny little bits, much uh, akin to his old Mad Magazine stuff, but then there's also these little autobiographical things, which I think are cool. It makes it a neat way... Uh, a neat thing to read because you're getting more substance than just silliness. There's some cool stuff in there. Um, then, speaking, of course, of, of my monkeys, mm. Planet of the Apes number nine. Boom's doing a great job. Um, I, I am liking Betrayal better because yeah. it's young Zayas. It literally right. is my apes. Yeah. But but this is also good, and we should be ra- getting to the end of this story arc here. You know, they've been doing, I think it was uh, four issue story arcs. Maybe this is. Uh, or did we wrap up? No, I think we're, we're still... No, this is part one. There we go. So, yeah, we did finish up the last one. I kind of like that, the four-issue story arc yeah. thing. I was trying to remember. I was like, did they finish that up? They did, but it's kind of... Like, they hit a point where they're like, okay, we're good. We finished up that point. Yeah. And then move you into the next story, which I think is a good way to do it. Mm. So, yeah, Planet of the Apes uh, by Boom. Good, fun stuff. What do, you, what do you got there? Well, I'm going to start off with a little New 52. We are in the uh, month four. All the issue fours are out. And I'm going to start uh, with the book that started it all, Justice League. Uh, Again, uh, we've got the putting the team together, uh, Jeff Johns and Jim Lee. This is where uh, Aquaman pretty much uh, joins the team. Uh, At that point, the team is pretty well established. Uh, It looks like uh, Cyborg has finally been assembled. And, cool. uh, and then we uh, we end with a little dark side as promised. Awesome. The, uh, the redesign awesome. of dark side. So yeah, I mean this is uh this is has been a really good book all along, um, at least in my opinion. And uh, and and this should be no different. Next up, Green Lantern Core. This is actually probably my least favorite of the Green Lantern books. I've not been reading that. Um, and, and no offense to the guys involved, uh, this is definitely, it's continuing a lot of the stuff that was there before. Right. I, mean, I guess that's, this has been the least shaken up, I think. Uh, it, it's John Stewart and Guy Gardner, uh, because Kyle's off in, in another book. It's good stuff, it's pretty standard Green Lantern stuff if you're a Lantern fan. Uh, somebody's killing Green Lanterns, there's always somebody killing Green Always. Uh, and they gotta figure it out. A bunch of Lanterns were, were uh, trapped behind enemy lines against... This, uh, this group of guys who pretty much seem seem to be able to break through their green energy. So, uh, oh, interesting. So there, uh, it, there's some Green Lanterns in trouble. Still a good book, um, but again, not not uh, not as strong as Green Lantern or or, uh, or the uh, New Guardians book, I think. Next up is Wonder Woman, one of the big surprises of the New Fifty Two. Uh, again, we've got Brian Azzarello and Cliff Chang. Uh, this is just a really great take on Wonder Woman. I mean, they're, they're hearing really, good things about it. Uh, Real good things. The, the reinventing her mythology, embedding it with uh, a lot of Greek mythology, which I think she needed. She yeah. needed something because they want her to be one of the big three, and no one cares. No, but I think after this run, people are going to care. I mean, we found out that she uh, was not made of clay. She's the actual daughter of Zeus, um, and uh, so she's basically a demigod. Uh, but even even beyond that, it's just been a really powerful dramatic story uh with wonder woman kind of uh bec- this new revelation has made her sort of rethink her place in and th- in society okay. in uh in in the world she's given up being uh diana because uh she of her the lies of her mother okay. she's now uh, only wonder woman and uh she's finding a new place in her in the world because the old place never sold exactly so. next up is uh nightwing uh, i i i had Became a fan of Dick Grayson while he was Batman. I've continued on to here. Uh, it's got a lot of the uh, carnival stuff. Um, I was a big right. fan of uh, Eddie. Or, uh, God, I can't remember the guy's name. Eddie Barrows, who was drawing it. Oh. Uh, apparently, we've got a fill-in artist on this one. Not quite as strong. There's a lot of that. Though. Trevor McCarthy. Yeah, you're going to be seeing a lot of that. A lot of the switches. So uh, hopefully, the the writing will stay up as well. But uh, Nightwing's been a pretty solid book so far. Uh, next up is yet another issue of X Force. I swear to God, this book's coming out every week. Well, uh, it is. Last we did week, have one last we week. We had the uh, the bagged cover. No, uh, Grandpa did not do the interiors. He, did he not, just did the cover. Just the cover. We've got uh, Robbie Rodriguez. Um, the status quo was shaken up uh, last issue because it's only been a month. I won't spoil anything. But, yeah, it's uh, all, only the week, so we can't. When it's been yeah. a month, eh, yeah, we'll that, spoil, you guys should be caught up. But but uh, but this is also the first issue that's a, that's officially part of the Regenesis relaunch. So we've got the new cover treatment, the new status quo, 
uh, but we've still got Rick Remender writing it, and uh, this has been a great book. It's really been a great book. Um, solid. This is the the kind of hard edge X Men team. You know, you got your Deadpool, Wolverine, Nightcrawler from the alternate dimension, Psylocke. Basically, all the badasses in one book. Uh, also, part of this this relaunch, going back to you know, it's funny, Jason Aaron. Uh, didn't show up on this show forever, and now he's showing up all the time. Right. Uh, with Wolverine and the X-Men. Well, they got him writing everything. Uh, this is a great cover. Remember when Wolverine was really cool? Me neither. Uh, this has got <laughs> that Kid, made me laugh. Kid Omega from, uh, from the Grant Morrison run uh, is basically a part of the school. And uh, with, that, with all of the stuff that's going on with the uh, living volcano or whatever that's under the school, um, oh, it looks like... Uh, Looks like somebody else is coming back in this issue. I won't tell you who. But uh, Jason Aaron's been doing a good job. This has been a very fun book. This is the X-Men being a school again, something it hasn't been in quite some time. But uh, with Wolverine heading the show, it's uh, it's a bit of a twist. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Last issue, we finished up the, uh, the new Vulture and his Vulture kid storyline. Uh, and this one, the Sinister Six Takeover. I'm excited about that. I love the Sinister Six. Looking at the cover here, we've got Sandman, we've got Dr. Octopus, we've got Mysterio, we've got Chameleon, Rhino, Electro. You know, this is classic Basically stuff. Basically, everyone on my arms. Yeah. <laughs> classic stuff. Dan Slott and Umberto Ramos. Uh, this is going to be a big deal in Spider-Man. Uh, it looks like we got some MODOK in there, too. we got to love MODOK. I love MODOK. Uh, but, yeah, Spider-Man's been a great book. It says across the top, the world's greatest superhero. I think they're right. I think so, too. Continuing. And, and the book is still doing very, very well, contrary to what J. Michael Straczynski <laughs> would have you believe. Uh, another book that's doing very well still is uh, The Ultimate Spider-Man. That uh, is doing well. In this one, uh, Miles Morales meets up with uh, The Ultimate Spider-Woman. Who happens to be a female clone of Peter Parker? So, uh, so that's going to be kind of interesting. Uh, Peter Parker kind of gets to meet uh, the, the uh, his replacement or her replacement. I don't know. This is getting confusing. I'm just going to move on. Uh, Invincible. This has been a great book. This is one of those books that kind of gets in kind of a lull for a while and then picks back up again. You know, we had left off with uh, with Mark kind of deciding that the best way to save the world would be to team up with the villain and uh and that's basically got everybody on earth kind of freaked out uh then the story jumped back into space where we've got omni-man and kid omni-man um basically and alan the aliens alan gonna, the alien they they, they found make out our decision that the uh viltramites are uh, on earth so uh alan to save the universe has decided they've got to wipe them out with the virus that may actually wipe out all the human life on Earth, too. But it's collateral damage. Small price to pay to save the rest of the universe, but uh, I think the uh, the Omni-Men are not going to agree with it. So mm, There's going to be a fight. we got to throw it There's a big fight. You know, Invincible does uh, does a great job of talking, and then every once in a while, they just start beating the crap out of each other. That's what I like about that book. He yeah. does the, the talking stuff to get you where you need to be in terms yeah. of story, and then he'll spend an issue just kicking the crap out of his character. Yeah, I love and, it. Man, they have just hardcore, brutal fights in this book. Um, <sighs> yeah, no but, kidding. Uh, but yeah, this is a great book. So uh, uh, an all ages friendly book to a point, and then it took this dark turn. Yeah, and now yeah. it's not like I don't feel like I can recommend it to kids anymore. No, definitely not. I mean, just flipping through this, there's some. Oh, there's it's some, brutal. This is an R rated book. Yeah, this is. It wasn't book. at no? first. It wasn't, but the book has grown up with Mark. Yep. So, uh, so yeah, it's a fantastic book. Uh, it, you know, I, a lot of people love, you know, Kirkman on The Walking Dead. For me, this is really what I think of when I think of Kirkman. Because he does this kind of superhero just fantastic. Yeah. Uh, next up is Hellblazer. Great we got, cover. Uh, we got uh, John Constantine wearing the Union Jack, hugging the, uh, yeah, look at, the Statue I, you know of Liberty, wearing his coat. I am I am not that trusting of that crazy green lady anyway. No. If we well, don't like the French, how come she's our symbol of freedom? Yeah. When she's inviting all of the sick and the downtrodden to enter our borders. I say we send that ugly green lady back to France. I'll take the Eiffel Tower in return. I don't even want the Eiffel Tower, but they want to keep it. They can keep both. Nah, I don't know. I think I should, we should take something from the French. Yeah, French fries. <laughs> French toast. That's all I need. Uh, French kissing. That's all we need. Uh, but yeah, uh, it looks like Constantine's coming to America. Uh, his, he's on Is a James quest. Brown in it? <laughs> <laughs> hot, ha! Hey. Well, James Brown's dead, so he can not. Uh, Constantine can talk to him. Uh, he's on a quest for his coat. His coat, 
because of all the stuff that he's gone through over the years, now has a personality and magical powers, and it's killing people left and right, looking for a new owner to help it find more chaos and destruction. So Constantine's got to get That's his coat. Awesome. He's got to get his coat back before it causes any serious damage to the world. Uh, only only Hellblazer could make that story scary. So uh, right. So that's pretty much my stack. All right, brings me to the, the top of my stack here. There's a book that I think has been the top my this top is, pick more than once. This has been a top pick many times for you. Uh, Ghostbusters number four. I like this book. IDW is, is IDW and Boom both are doing a great job with these you know licensed characters. I Ghostbusters feels like the movie to me. I mean, it's a continuation of that. You know, their, uh, their, their proto-packs aren't really working like they used to. Uh, the ghosts have seemingly gotten stronger and are not really, you know, worried about the beams anymore. They're kind of like, I'll quit it! Mm-hmm. And uh, the Ghostbusters got to figure out how to, how to beat this new big bad. And uh, I like it. You know, we've got all the characters from the movies. All of them. Um, just really fun stuff. A really, really cool tale. If you are a Ghostbusters fan and you're not reading this book, I ask you, Why? Why? I understand how people sometimes are a little, well, the comics, not yeah. the movie, and no, nah, nah, nah. Listen, I am the biggest proponent of that. I oftentimes don't want to deal with adaptations. I don't even care, and I don't want to read them. They're not interesting to me because they're not they're not real. No. I know we're talking about fiction, but they're not real a in terms of, of the fiction. They, they don't this capture is. the voice of the original. This does to me. This is this is right there. I, I think, uh, you know, who, who's doing the writing here? Eric Burnham is just doing a great job. Uh, really, really enjoying it. Can't say enough good things. What's your top pick, Mike? So my top pick is Batman Incorporated Leviathan Strikes Number 1. Uh, this is a big old $6.99 kind of mini trade paperback. Uh, this is wrapping up... The prestige format style that yep. I like. This is wrapping up the uh, the Batman Incorporated storyline that was started with uh, Batman Incorporated Number 1 and Batman The Return. They couldn't finish it up. Uh, in time for the new 52, so they put it on hold, and uh, this is the the completion of that storyline before the book relaunches with a new number one. Uh, flipping through it, it looks like this might even be kind of set in the pre New 52, pre Flashpoint universe. It looks like we've got oh, okay. Stephanie the uh, Stephanie Brown Batgirl in here. Interesting. Um, so yeah, this is really kind of what the last. So they're gonna couple... finish it up and then somehow. Get well, us into Batman Inc. in the New 52 Yeah, style. I think that this is basically, if the book hadn't hit the delays, this probably would have all come out before the New 52. Uh, but they couldn't get it done, so they're getting it out now. It's kind of a strange way to do it. But uh, this seems like it's probably the last two issues that they would have huh? done. Um, they reveal who's been behind this. Uh, it's someone that you probably could have guessed. And, uh, and then there's also just some kind of interesting back matter. Catching uh-huh. you up and giving you some behind the scenes of, of what's uh, gone on so far. But it's Grant Morrison, Chris Burnham, and Cameron Stewart. Uh, I've been a big fan of this book ever since it launched. I'm glad to see it back. Can't wait to see the kind People of slightly, the slightly new take that they're going to have on it uh, with the new 52 when it relaunches. But, uh, you know, it's nice to see uh, it's nice to see this storyline finishing up. And the cover's got Batman and a bunch of Batman robots. So you can't beat that. Well, you got Fear the Robots. Batman should know better. Oh, yeah. That man should know better. He should. But with that, that is your Week in Geek.